when you're 75 years old, 80 years old, right? And you're looking back, you can either be like, oh man, I wish I did that. I wish I didn't like choose to do, you know, this job. I wish I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. Or you could be like, that was like, my life has been fulfilled. I actually, yeah. that's a well-lived life. And I'm really happy that I actually pushed forward and put that effort into what I wanted and what I needed, so. Got the hounds in here. Welcome to Studio One, baby. How are we doing? Amazing. Great. Amazing. Doing yep. good? Yep. Doing All good. right. So, Trey, um, I know we met and started doing the podcast, right? Correcto mundo. But you know there was a there was a, bef a B, what would it be, a BT before Trey? Wow. Damn, BT. A BT on the podcast. Mm. And these guys were a part of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Seriously? Oh, yeah. Deadass. Oh, yeah. For real? Yeah. Okay. So we want to talk about that today, and I appreciate you guys coming through. And, uh, Absolutely. You know, I know you guys are busy, got a lot of stuff going on, so appreciate you taking some time out to come talk to us here at the studio. Um, but, dude, I've been just reminiscing. This is episode 50, by the way, so this is like a semi-milestone that we got going on here. And um, I thought it would be really, really fun to go back in time before episode one, before the Trey Tipton days, and talk about the beginning of the podcast and like kind of what that looked like because you guys were really yeah. instrumental into bringing this thing into life. You created yeah. the logo that's behind us that mm. um, has been shared around uh, a lot recently. We've we've got some really big name guys wearing the hat, which is like mind boggling to me. Like I, I never thought. Well, I, I did think. You know, you got to <laughs> you got to think that it's possible. It's to, great to see. It, yeah, it's it's it's, cool. it's really exciting. So let's before we get into all that though, let our viewers and our listeners know who you guys are, what you do, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, so um, I'm Clay McCloskey. I'm Cole McCloskey. And we run a creative agency known as Hounds. Uh, we do everything from video production to photo production, branding, consultation, I mean, the whole nine yards. A Swiss Army know. knife of uh, creativity. <laughs> <laughs> like that. I do like that. That's actually really, really smooth. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what are some, um, I mean, you know, talk to some of the projects that you've done. I, I know the first time I met you guys um, professionally, I mean, we, we went to the same church for a while and yep. we had similar friend groups and uh, that led to me seeing some of the work that you had been doing. And one of the first projects, I think one of the first ones we collabed on was the Turner's yes. 50th anniversary. Yes. There's something about you guys in 50th. Something about us in 50th. I don't know what it me. is, but 50 nifty. <laughs> yeah. But um, talk to me a little bit about how you guys, you know, founded Hounds and like where you know, your background and how you got to that point? Well, I mean, uh, we wanted to do something creative and sort of broad as well. We don't want to just like stick into one field because we had skills to do multiple things. Um, and we were really inspired by a creative collective known as Madbury Club back in the day. And they were very popular, um, very influential in the creative community like all over. I mean, they were huge and they were based out of New York. Uh, we wanted to do something like that, you know, get a team together of just uh, creatives and you know, do video, photo, design, builds, whatever you name, you know, whatever it is, you name it. Um, and then from there, you know, we kind of try to figure it out how we could make it like a legit business thing and not just a creative side project. Um, and we just were able to, we were, we were very blessed and fortunate enough to gain some really great clients to make that a reality. Mm -hmm. So it's been, been really That's great. Dope. Yeah, it's definitely dope. Mm -hmm. So going back growing up, were you guys both, like, did you know you were creatives growing up? Like, what were some things that you guys would do around the house that you were like, oh, this is just different. This is really fun. We definitely were. I think it was one of those things where a lot of the times we would um, we'd always be trying to, like, pick up a camera or maybe create some random business of ours, you know, <laughs> trying to create all the logistics behind it or whatever we could do at a young age. We we're like, yeah, this is legit. But mm -hmm. we had no idea what we we're talking about. Um <laughs> But yeah, and even things like going back to being younger, you know, we even the things I think that we had witnessed from whether he's in like, like our, for example, like our dad had his own businesses growing up and he was very, or, you know, as he like, as, as we were growing up, we saw his business uh, bloom and he was very creative with it. He was in the home building industry for the most part. Okay. Um, so things like that inspired us. Um, and, you know, all the other outside references, even things most random could be like the attitude era and WWF. Oh, yeah. You know hey. what I mean? Like, yeah, whatever, Stickers, maybe. whatever it is, you know, right. billboards, signs, mm. all that kind of stuff. I mean, we loved a lot of vintage things. So we were always digging and trying to find something cool. 
So yeah. I think that's really what inspired us. So yeah. what's the record between you two, like, in terms of fighting? Because if y'all know y'all watching <laughs> WWF, that means you're at the crib trying out the moves. Actually, we got really good at the moves. I can lie. <laughs> For there was actually a point in time where we were like, damn, maybe we could be like the new Legion of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> like, this could potentially happen. <laughs> so we actually, like, were, you know, had the trampoline and everything. We were like, all right, we're doing this. But we never really, like, fought, like, yeah. in the sense of, like, yeah, physical fighting. Like I don't. We never like actually got in really any scuffles. Yeah, not not each other. Yeah, mm. it, it was just like more like WWF. But you guys definitely used to go back to back in a couple fights, right? Like absolutely. You got, okay, I just had to make sure that you're looking out for <laughs> uh, your brother. Absolutely, like. that's awesome. I remember one of the first things uh, that I saw when we actually went to their spot to do the very first photo shoot mm -hmm. of the podcast. Not to get ahead of us, but one of the first things I saw in their closet was this like Legion of Doom like remote control monster truck. Yep, and mm. like. I was like, dude, this is amazing. And they had like all these cassettes and like their their house is like everything that you see about the hounds as a creative agency is portrayed in their house. Now, I know you guys have recently you don't both don't live, live together, together anymore. anymore no, right? So yeah. no, both, yeah, what but happened? it was. They I got married, up, dude. You got married, <laughs> and, and I'm I about to get out. married. <laughs> what kind of what kind of brother gets married and kicks you out that quick? I like, know, right? It's crazy. I'm all right with that. It's okay. <laughs> he said I'm about to get I'm married right. too. It's cool. That's cool, yeah. man. That's really um, cool. So let's go back a little bit um, and, and talk about, you know, the, the beginning of this. And again, like I want to highlight you guys a little bit on this show as well, too. So yeah. I don't want to make this all about us. But like I got to know, what was it like to hear from me? Because when I reached out to you guys, right? Yeah. I had no clue how I wanted to work with you guys. I just had seen you doing some really cool things. And I yeah. was like, I like to do really cool things. So yeah. I legit reached out and I was like, dude, I just want to, you know, maybe start with a consultation or like whatever to just talk about some ideas I have, you know, throw some ideas out there, see what sticks. And I remember the first meeting we had, like, we didn't really have a game plan. Right. Yeah. And we just kind of sat down and started like feeling each other out. So like, where was your head at? Like going into that meeting, what are you thinking, you know, this is going to lead to or possibly even be? I mean, honestly, like our biggest thing is we love telling a story. So if we could get the basis of like your life and try to figure out where you want to go with, you know, the brand or the podcast or whatever we we're deciding on. I um, mean, that's our main goal. You know, there may not be a, a game plan in the beginning, uh, but if we can dig deep and research and just really find out who you are, I think that's like what helps us a lot. Um, Attention to detail is like huge for us because we, like I said, we love storytelling. And if we can figure out things that aren't maybe mainstream or, you know, our goal is to make it as different and original as possible. Um, and I could see a lot of your creativity through that and through, you know, sports, but not just sports, you know, how creative you are with art. Um, I think it was just like a perfect combination with what we did create together. Mm -hmm. um, and although I, I, you know, I know you didn't exactly know what you wanted to do, I still could see what, like, I feel like you knew it just, you just needed some guidance and we were able yeah. to help you. And now, I mean, you're crushing it. So we love that. Yeah. We yeah. like, I think the thing is it's, if you bring us an idea, we're going to make it a reality. We're going to find how, whatever we have to do, however we have to do it, you know, and it, that goes back to, like you said, like the storytelling aspect or you know whatever research we have to put in, or even just like getting to know the person that we're talking to and see yeah. like where your head's at. And it's like, yeah, right off the bat, you might be like, there's really no game plan, but in reality, it's like, you wanna meet with someone and you want it to be as organic as possible to like, f for that to like actually work out. And it's like, you had the idea of like, you wanna incorporate some sort of blend of fashion with sports, right? And that mm -hmm. was like, at the end of the day, that was like the basis. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, so how are we going to be able to do this? And I mean, you, not only that, you had references and things that you really liked in the past that inspired you. And that's like, I mean, so many people, there's all inspiration for you. So it's like all of this together, we were able to like come up yeah. with a plan for you. You know, even if it was something where like, you know, we were coming up with a plan, but at the end of the day, even just being there to listen to you, like you were able to come up with the plan. You were really driving the whole system. So it really right. made it work. Yeah, it was funny. Like I, I remember like I feel like there was a couple meetings where I would just talk You'd for like, like an ah. hour. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be like, all right, do you guys got all that? Like I, I just felt like I was cooped up for so long with all these ideas and like everyone. I mean, as a creative, it's rare that you have 
somebody to, you know, bounce ideas off of, but not only just like have someone tell you like, yeah, you should do that. But like yeah. have people be like, well, here's how we can do that. Right. And mm -hmm. so that was like the biggest thing for me. And I think that that's what actually took me to the next level as an artist was, um, you know, putting my money where my mouth was and just, you know, I, you know, I didn't have an extra couple hundred bucks a month to pay for like consultation, but mm -hmm. I just knew that I was hitting a lid for what I could do and I needed other people to speak into it. You know, I look around the city, I saw what you guys did with the Turners, you know, uh, event. I'm trying to like, dude, sometimes like having guests on it, like helps me backtrack and actually think, cause yeah. I'm like, was Turners before or after? Uh, <clears throat> that was after. It was that after. was after, right? It was after, cause I remember we had, uh, I don't know, I don't know why, just timeline wise, I think that was like, cause when it we- It was right um, around that summer. Well, cause we started talking at the end of 2020, right? And then the Turner's project was in 2022. Yeah. So, yeah, we launched so. episode one in January of 2022. Dang. So you mean to tell me that this was going for what? About two years before I jumped on? Or like a year? one. Like one year? One. One. Yeah, like one year. Okay. So then yeah, yeah. how did they think of the logo? Because the logo is something that's like catching everybody's yeah. eye right now. When I say it's everybody, <laughs> like it's legitimately getting everywhere at yeah. this point. So like, how did you guys come up with this amazing logo? Cause I'm addicted to it. I was addicted to it before I actually got the chance to like be a part of it. <laughs> yeah. So like, I'm curious. I mean, it's, if you look at it, it's very aesthetically simple. Um, but also it, there's longevity to it. So from the athletic aesthetic typeface, it's very classic sports related in some way with the hard edges. Um, and then the center with the AA and that's like a, just a classic logo. You see that yeah. on a lot of old sports teams and, um, we put this idea together and I think at the time you were discussing, um, I was when NFTs were kind of big Oh yeah, and you're like, you saw it and you're like, man, like I could make this into like a character, yeah. like an NFT mm -hmm. character. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy is I, I went and did a show, um, in Bell Vernon at yeah. this, like, uh, this place called remixed, I believe is the name okay. of it. It's like this, you know, they, they sell like old games and sports cards and, that's, was that that Yin's Palooza? Yeah, it was, it was called Yin's or Palooza. I, I remember you being a part of that. It was yeah. the name of it. Anyways, I, I got invited by the guy who, you know, opened the store up, and I had no idea what to expect, but I ended up sitting there next to uh, Joseph Woes, I believe is his name. Yeah. Okay. He's okay. like an, a, an Emmy-winning um, cartoonist. And oh, so wow. like, he's done a bunch of like really amazing cartoons that I'm sure you guys would actually recognize yeah. um, because I know that you're real big into like the vintage seen in like a lot of these are older, you know, mm. cartoons that became really, you know, widespread and have a lot of novelties around them. So yeah. um, anyways, I, I brought the logo over to him and I was like, I was like, hey, um, you know, could you make this into a character? And he turned it into like this robot. And <laughs> I remember that I, I shared like a video. So like it, that has always been in the background. Like I've always saw a person. What, what people don't know, though, is this was actually uh, you didn't show me this option at first. You guys actually hit me with four options for the logo. Dang. And I, I was like leaning towards a couple of them, but I was like, dude, I don't know. Like, I don't know if any, any of these scream at me. And then you were like, well, we got this fifth option, but like, we weren't sure if it was like, you know, up the, cause it, I kind of put you guys in a box at first. Cause I was like, I want it to be like blue collar, like whatever. But, and it's funny, I actually went back and looked at one of the options you guys gave me looks like a road. It's very similar to like pavement group oh, vibes. Oh yes, I know exactly which mm -hmm. one you're talking and about. And it's yes. like, uh -huh. um, it's really interesting, like how that that was actually the one that I was Full leaning towards. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't know. And you were like, well, we got this fifth option. You pulled it up, and I was like, that's it. That's it. Immediately, dude. I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I think this is it, dude. Right. It is. It is 100 percent it. It's not just it. It's him. It's yeah. him a thief from the Himalayas. <laughs> so you guys, you crushed the logo. You brought the vision to life. And not only the logo, but the theme song for the show too. It was so, also from them. Yep. Created the theme song from the ground over here. How yeah. many cartoons did you have to watch to really make this happen? Because <laughs> like you said, you guys were vintage guys. You said they like a lot of different things. What was the cartoon you guys watched growing up? <laughs> Dude, I'm that's curious. one of Trey's favorite. It's my questions. favorite question. Man, I would say, I mean, SpongeBob was huge. Yeah, um, that was. A, but I'm trying to think. Yeah, even because of Sandy Cheeks. Oh, I get it. That's that's, a, that's <laughs> it. You found out. It. Yep. Trey. <laughs> 
Sandy Cheeks. He's got a he's got a crush on Sandy Cheeks. I love Sandy Cheeks. Yeah. It was one of those things where it's like you didn't even have to tell the audience. Like now we know. You know what I mean? Like I, I, lo- it, I love. I just started introducing SpongeBob to my little girl, and it's yeah. it's so great because now I just get to rewatch it and have an excuse to just watch cartoons. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's, it's well, so even, timeless. I, at the end of the day, it's like yeah, it's like a goofy cartoon, but. If you look truly look into like the writing of SpongeBob, yeah. crazy. It's actually very good. Yeah, they, crazy. it's because it, you know they it's a kids show, but they definitely throw a lot of things in for like all ages for people to understand. I mean, there's 100%. stuff in there that kids would be. Like, I don't. And I also think that's why a lot of parents like didn't want their kids to watch it. Oh because yeah, because it's like all right, I, was like, a I don't big want my kid to like hear that, or I don't want them to like. It's like little things that you know, kid might not understand, but then yeah. What's the best SpongeBob it? episode? Oh, you're asking a great question. I got my favorite. Oh, man. Mm. My goodness. I saw it. Yeah. I mean, I'll start. Yeah, you go, go for it. It. Yeah. it was on yesterday. They did the bubble bowl. That's like, my dude, favorite. That is my all time favorite. Dude, that's, incredible that payoff at the end of like Squilliam <laughs> just like fainting and then getting carted off. I felt amazing. Mm. That's. The uh, I, I love the uh, the Dirty Dan one. I don't know why. I'm Dirty Dan. <laughs> hey, <that's laughs> Dan. Just like the the faces in it and everything. Just that's like the really weird like extreme like mm-hmm. drawings of when them. they do those like close up shots of like the hyper detail. It's like ridiculous. It's, no, it's crazy. the funniest one. To, well, the second funniest one because I love that one. That one's like my all time mm-hmm. favorite. But the second one is when like SpongeBob first meets Sandy and he's like, I don't need water. <laughs> yeah. and I'm just like, Classic. bro, like I was crying. <laughs> I don't know why. That was hilarious. But this goes in actually to my actual question. I would just always like to ask a funny yeah. question. Right. But my ask, my it's my ask, your asshole yeah. question, my, asshole hey, question? Yo. my hey, actual yo. question is, is where does your creative creativity come from? Like who in your family is most creative? And if there isn't anybody, like when did you guys know like, oh shit, like we're OD creative? I think that comes from like, our dad was really creative and he, he could draw really well. Um, he was also a musician. Also too. a musician. Wow. He was a, a, he was a jewel smith for 18 years and then went into the home building industry. Um, but everything he did, he like really looked at it in like a creative way. Um, so he was always like really like pushing us to be like more creative and he kind of like let us like, you know, he would try to keep us reeled in, but he was like, you guys should like follow your dream and like do what you guys want to do. Um, and our mom is also very creative. She's very into music. So mm. we learn a lot of music from her. Mm. Um, so I say that. And then plus, like being a twin, it's one of those things where like if you, if you had like an extra version of yourself, like that's like I think why Hounds worked really well at the beginning because like Vinny had said, like I'm a creative that just like can't get my ideas out. And mm. you needed someone there. But like now you look at us, it's like, all right, I can bounce. We can bounce ideas off each other. And we're working under one business trying to figure this out. Um, but even as kids, you know, you, you look into things, you find different music, you find different TV shows and movies or something like that. Like, hey, did you hear this song yet? Or did you watch this movie yet? And he do the same thing to me. So we're like constantly bouncing back and forth. Or, hey, did you see this sticker, this design? Or, you know, we passed this street. Did you see that like billboard? That was like wild to see. Well, yeah. not only that, but also, I mean, you think about it for what we do as a creative agency, you know, we have multiple talents and what we can do. It's like, well, that's because... One of us could learn something, right? And then the other person could be, he could be learning something else. And then we'd be trading like, how did you do that? Like, yep. how, how, how could I do it? And it's like right there, like you can. How y'all have, just said that at the same time messed my head <laughs> up. Like, I'm not going to lie. When you said, how did you, could you do that? I said, yeah. these mother. <laughs> yeah. Dude, how do you, I'm actually interested in this. How do you guys resolve like creative differences? Oh, this is a great It's question. actually like not that hard. Yeah. Really? Because I think the thing is, is like. I mean, you know, we have our differences, right? But at the end of the day, we both have like a kind of like a common goal for the most part, or the things like that we enjoy or right. like are pretty similar. But you know, not everything is. I'd say we just kind of like sit down and we do it the way that like everyone tries to do it in business. But every, you know, when you start out with a business with a partner, and you're like, oh, we'll like sit down and actually talk this through, and then half the time it turns into a legal battle and <laughs> it doesn't, act, so, but we actually do that. We like sit down and, okay, well you think this and I think this, where can we meet in the middle? Or like, let's or see why find, How can better. I understand yeah. from yeah. your point of view? And like, cause that's the thing. It's like, at the end of the day, it's like, you might come into it with like all the confidence in the world. Like this is the best idea ever. But then you see maybe if you actually truly are listening to the other person and you see where they're coming from, you might be like, Oh shit! Actually, that was yeah, <laughs> kind of dumb. <laughs> I don't like that actually. But you know, there's things like that. But I think yeah, just overall, it's more so like at the end of the day, is it is your pride worth it? 
mm. you know, and it's like, think it through. And yeah, yeah. not everything's going to be a perfect, like, sounds good. Yeah, you're right. hundred percent. But like, we're going to talk it through and it might mm-hmm. take a little bit, but it's, we're always going to find, you know, that route to be yeah. where we both want to be at the end of the day. The correct answer was we, t- we take it to the trampoline and we Royal <laughs> Wait, Rumble. Royal Rumble. <laughs> yeah. Whoever gets the Stone Cold Sunner first. Yeah. There we go. That's it. Um, so to go back to the theme, though, do you mm-hmm. remember like the initial like inspiration or like what I gave you for it? I do. Well, can you take me through that? What were you thinking? Were you like this? This dude. <laughs> it was see, one of those things, though, that my background, I have like a, a background in actual like music production right. and engineering. So like and just like doing it on the side or something that I love. And I also do it like anything we do audio wise, mostly like whether it's like creating a score for like a commercial or whatever, or like post-production, that's mostly what I do. I don't really do as much like live audio, um, but that's all handled by me anyways. Um, so when you came to me, you're like, you're like, Hey, I want to find a way to incorporate renegade by sticks. Cause it's like, <laughs> this is like the theme for the Steelers, obviously. And I was yeah. like, I get that. And from my work in the past, you know, I know how to, sample music so it's like and i know how to like chop it up properly so i was like you know what i'm gonna find a way to use renegade but turn it into like a more modern sounding you know theme that would fit the you know your topics or even just like the aesthetic of athletic aesthetic yeah um and at the end of the day you know i think i gave you i think i just sent you the first like cut of everything and you were like we're good. <laughs> yeah. Shit, I really good. had no revisions on it because yeah. for one, like I've learned as a creative that, um, you know, I can give my input, but like, that's why I hired you. Right. Like, I know that you have an ear and you know what works. Now, if I, if I felt something was off on it, I would speak that. But yeah. like, you know, I think that people, you know, I've experienced it where you get put in a box. And like I said, I felt like I kind of did that with the logo. And then I realized with the music, I'm really out of my, you know, element. Um, And so I just, you know, I listened and I was like, immediately, this, this is hits, checks all the boxes for what I was looking for. And I remember, I think we were sitting at like Delaney's coffee Mm -hmm. shop in Southside and like, uh, um, dude, it just, it hit me and and I actually have a video of it. And I was like, this is it, man. And it felt so, it was so cool. Because when you have like a vision for something, and like I said, the first month of us meeting was trying to figure out what we were going to do together. Then to manifest that into an actual podcast, have a logo, have a theme song, and just be like, wow, like this is coming together. Quick. Um, And then, you know, we, we set up the first couple episodes. You know, we're rolling and then we had our first big guest on, which was Benny Snell. And I mean, we had I had flown Jake Polino in, which uh, that was a really fun weekend. And dude, you were you guys were like all over that. I think you were the one that actually shot most of it, right? You were there. Yeah. yeah and I even uh, I think I helped create the itinerary for you guys. You did put together <laughs> what you're going to do that day. That was a crazy was like a fun weekend. day. It was so much fun, man. That was when we did all the turns. Sure, and, I know exactly which one you're yeah. doing. But then we had Benny on and that progressed. And I was actually sitting back at um, the High Line with you guys on another meeting. And we were like kind of at a phase where I was like, dude, I don't know, but I need the podcast to kind of get to another level. Like I need to take it to the next step. Like we're getting views. Benny's episode was doing really well. Yep. Like the uniform segment took off. Like all these different wins were stacking up. But I was like, man, we need to really take this momentum. Right. But I was like, I don't really know who to reach out to, whatever. And I was sitting there at a, me- at a meeting with them and you called actually. And I was like, there's this dude named Trey. He used to play for Pitt. He, he just asked me to hit him up. So I stepped away and I walked down the hallway and called you. Mm-hmm. And you were like, yeah, I got this, you know, this dude named Brian. I want to introduce you to. And then like came back, we finished our meeting. And like the trajectory of that, if we didn't start, like you would have never seen, because I don't know if you guys know this, the reason he found me was because he saw the interview I did with MJ Devonshire, yeah, which was a former oh, teammate yeah. of his. Yeah. 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 And so, like, all of this happened because we just went out on a whim and started this this show. Yeah. And then shortly after that, th- these dudes are the craziest mofos I ever met in my life. <laughs> so that manifested into what you got on your shirt right now, the exhibit. And so I want to talk just a little bit about that. Like, 
the initial idea for the exhibit and that whole thing was a blur to me. It so happened you go walk in less me than a month. It. Yeah, walk Unless, me through it from your perspective. So you had originally, when we first started talking, you had wanted to do an event and of some sort. And you were saying, I don't know if it would be like a workshop with sneak with custom sneakers, you know, maybe doing a warehouse space, something of that nature, you know, food trucks, whatever, maybe Iron City involved, whatever. Mm-hmm. And we put kind of like that on the back burner because we weren't sure where exactly we we're going to go with that yet. You were just starting this idea out. It's like, we'll figure that out once we get to a certain point. Yeah. And then obviously you met Trey and Brian and um, you had mentioned this idea like, hey, Remember I was kind of like mentioning some type of event? Well, like, and at this time you were doing your series. Mm-hmm. So like, you're like, they, they love it. And they want to see this like turn into something more than just like me posting on social media. They want yeah. it to be actually displayed to everybody. They're mm-hmm. like, I, we want to see this happen. And we want to invest in you on that. And I remember that being a conversation and I was like, oh, that'd be amazing. Like, let's like set up a meeting and like, let's talk about this. And then when we finally met, we like threw it because it was the goal was to do it around the Super Bowl weekend. We we're trying to get that figured out, but we had met, like I said, like maybe maybe a month, maybe a little <laughs> bit less than a month before. And he's like, "Yeah, is this doable?" <laughs> and I was like, "We can make it happen." Because yeah. like, like honestly, I feel like majority of people like wouldn't take that on because it's a lot of stress and a lot of chaos and there's a lot of moving parts. But I mean. We don't really like to say no to things because we're just like having fun and seeing where it goes. And you learn from it. It's an, yeah. it's, I was like, we'll figure this out. We'll make it happen. We've done events before in less than a month, like at this scale, maybe not. But <laughs> yeah. It's going to still work out and it's still going to be amazing. Like, yeah. We'll figure this out and make it as you know, strong as possible. Um, and then from there, we just like went to work. You know, we started like brainstorming on these ideas. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. It's just I, so crazy, bro, just to think about it. This was a actual, we're right at a year right now, are we? It was a year yesterday. That's oh, so that wild. is crazy. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Like, it's think about cool. that, bro. And when I say a month, like, if you really think on how big of a scale that was, bro, that was like the first time I actually got the chance to meet you, meet you. You know what I mean? And we were starting to build a friendship. You weren't even an official co-host. That's what yet. I'm saying. Like, it's actually crazy. Like, because now, like, within that year, bro, I think sometimes, especially here at the Pavement Group and where we're at right now, Studio One, Things move so fast that it feels like three to five years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like there's such big things happening here all the time. It's like, oh, like we're, we're two, three, heads, three, two, three years ahead of time. Yep. Nah, bro. It's only a year ago that we were just figuring this all out. You were giving the information to them. You called me. It was like, yeah, you got to meet me at this warehouse. I'm like, where the hell are we at? You yeah. feel me? And then we <laughs> when pulled, we did the promo video, bro, that was one of my crazy. favorite things. That was a good day. Yeah. Ever created. Crazy. It was, was so, so dope. So yeah. dope. So like. With that one, I didn't get a chance to say to you guys, thank you, because that was probably the coolest thing I ever had the opportunity to do. And Shame also, that. thank you, because, like, you ain't even have to add me into it. You was like, bro, you should just host it. I'm like, all right, bet. Say less. <laughs> so I think it was a great time. But I want to ask you guys as well, man, like, let's talk about the beginning stages, because you knew Vinny before I knew Vinny. So, uh-huh. like, what was the beginning episodes like? Like, were they, like, were they funny? Was Vinny a little bit like, damn, like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like, what were they like? So... I mean, the, it was one of those things where he knew where he was going with it, right? But he wasn't as experienced with podcasting, which is totally normal. I mean, yeah, you've never done it before. It. It's yeah. like, what do you expect? So it's kind of just like there's a lot of trial and error, and that happens. Mm-hmm. But I think overall, um, I think the one good thing was, you know, starting it off with some guests that he was, like, more comfortable with was mm-hmm. good because, like, it didn't feel like a forced – like podcast episode, like most are, you know? Yeah. And it felt more like a, just a conversation that he was having. And, you know, when you're listening to a podcast, yeah, you might want to hear something that's a little more informational, but sometimes you want to listen to it and like, you want to get the information out of it, but you want it to feel like, okay, this is like a real conversation. It's not like, hey, what did you do this year? <laughs> yeah. I did this. Because then that's just like, I'm going to turn this shit off. Yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah. it's like, I think that was really cool. You know, the first episode was with, Cody Sable, which was like one of those things where, you know, like I said, there was like some trial and error. There's some things that like didn't work out four times. Right. And it was the fourth time. And that's why that episode actually seems more forced probably is because in the beginning, I knew what I wanted the first episode to like look and feel like. And I tried to like wrestle it to make it look and feel like that. And then I felt like the first conversation we ever had. And so before I wasn't asking for help on audio, I was like, I'm just going to like 
figure it out myself. Dude, I had like two iPhones, two like mics that are not ideal for podcasting. I literally in the comment section of the first video, I had like this guy that's really good with audio and stuff. He like hit me up and he was like, hey, don't use that mic. And I was like, all right. But like I wasn't asking them for advice. I was just winging it, bro. Just buying whatever I could right. get. And so I remember the first episode I was bummed because the audio didn't work. The shit. So then I recorded it again. Didn't work again. And then I hit him up. I was like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like, will you just help me? Will you sit there and just make sure that this is working? And so it was a process even just to get it to oh, upload and to crazy. like work. So that first episode is actually the third time we had that conversation. <laughs> and that's why in the episode you can feel that. It's like we've already had this conversation. Why are we know? doing it again? Which is another thing that happens to us every once in a while here. But like I think we have to bring Cody on again. Cause we're we're a little bit primed now. We yeah. got we got our feet wet. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. We're not as as wishy washy. My first time being your guest, right? I was like, I don't know how the hell I'm gonna do this. Like, I don't even know what I'm thinking about doing. What am I thinking about saying? Like, yeah. usually when I do podcasts, it's somebody interviewing me. So like, I know at least a response or an idea. Like when you interviewed me. Yeah. But like when you're interviewing somebody else, bro, there's some work that goes into this, man. Oh, it's it's a whole craft to try to interview right. people. But yeah, you can't just walk into it like I'm gonna wing it. But that's what I did. <laughs> you started out and you figured it out. But wow. yeah, I mean, there's there's that growing process where yeah. if I didn't have you guys to kind of troubleshoot with after ever, because at the first, you know, the first year was a monthly installment. So like it was everything yeah. in me to record one episode and flip it in a month. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, because at the time I'm doing art full time. Right, so like, right, right. you know, I'm, I'm still grinding on all the shoes and like all this stuff. So, and I'm editing it. So like, you know, at the end of it, I would come to you guys and be like, what do you think? Yeah. You know? And so there was a lot of what? I just had a crazy epiphany. What? Nah, bro. Because I'm sitting here thinking it's crazy on how God will take you in one direction to prepare mm -hmm. you for another direction. And you had no thoughts that you were going in this direction. Like, think about where you started with a podcast, right? Yep. And everything that you're doing right now with the people that you're currently doing it with, bro. Like, the start of the podcast, you were an artist that was just doing art. And you reached out to people. was like, yo, like... Let's run this. Let's see how it goes, right? And then you had to learn a bunch of tools, a bunch of ideas, a bunch of things on how it happens. Now we got seven different podcasts that we're running. We shoot episodes pretty much every day, if yeah. not every other day, right? Everything's scheduled. Everything's on time, bro. Like talk about, and again, I'm just saying this from, from the glory of God, bro. Like talk about how God genuinely blessed you in that way. Because like that wasn't a direction you were expecting to go where you would be doing one thing and it literally took you and made it a job for you. Yeah. Like that's, uh, it's crazy. You asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. Then also what you guys think from seeing yeah. it from a distance, because you guys basically taught this kid on how to do all this. And now you are the director <laughs> of all of this shit. Yeah, I mean, to answer your question, like I think about that a lot. I think about how, I think a lot of people feel a calling to do something mm -hmm. and then they don't lean into it because like the first podcast was enough to make me quit. The fact that I had to do it four times. I had a goal of dropping it January 1st. After all those issues, I got it out. I think it was actually like February 1st. And so I was like a month behind on when I wanted to drop episode one. Mm -hmm. Then episode two, there was audio issues as well because I tried to like finagle a new microphone and then yeah. it just didn't work out. And then episode three when I was, was finally when I was like, Cole, please come in here and record this. <laughs> like he was there to like help, but I was really just using the wrong equipment for the first two. And then finally, I was just like, help me find they found the mics, the initial mics, which I still have them in the back. So it's the ones with the colored mm -hmm. foam tops that we used. Um, and so, like, you know, ap after that, it was just like for me, man, I just kept in investing into the show, into the podcast, into the consultations, into the, you know, if I didn't have that, I don't I would have probably given up because I've done a lot of projects that I've you know, wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then once trials and tribulations happen, there's nobody there to be like, no, we're going to get through this. Like, come on with me, right. you know? And so I got to like rely on them and, and lean on them for like guidance through that. And it, it led it, you know, it led into something crazy, but yeah, man, like I, I do give a lot of it to like a calling on your life. Like, you know, I think God has placed people in my life to get me, you know, to push through certain things and right. you guys are, are part of that, you know, yeah. like I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for you guys having the availability and the time to, you know, invest in me. And I, and you know, and I, I hope that I helped invest into hounds Absolutely. through doing that as well. So, Absolutely. um, yeah, I mean, it was just, I think seeing it grow, like you had said at the beginning of the show, 
you didn't know what you were doing with it and you were at that time you were slammed and you were like stressed a lot and you're working like crazy hours and things were like things were kind of up in the air for you you didn't know exactly where you're going with your art and like what your future of your business was going to be right obviously you like had a good path because you were getting jobs and you're still doing custom shoes and custom paintings and it was like this is you know cool but that's you knew you could there's another chapter and you're like i need to get to that next that next goal and so from investing and just even seeing you like oh man like is this going to work out like i don't know and then you just kept investing more and more into yourself and then to the point where it got to you know exhibit one and that was i feel like exhibit one was this like just i don't know this beautiful showing of like who you were becoming and it's like this is like the new Vinny, like this is me mm. and you're like mm. ready to take on whatever it is that comes to you you made incredible relationships with people through that event i mean you work with a lot of people that you met through that event now yeah you know and you were you work with trey literally like every day same with brian like this is they invested in you and you've brought so much of an investment to their company as well so i don't know it's just really special to see i think god is sometimes it seems like things are really heavy and you're like oh he's not like i'm like what am i doing here like is he like actually like listening to me or it's like you, you pray and you're like ah, it's, i don't know what it is and it may not it's it's not always on time, but it's on time. Mm. You know, that's, I think one thing that I've like realized in my life is that I've like taken a step back and been like, it's not about me or my timeline. I'm just going to keep investing in myself and keep pushing and it's going to happen. Mm. Yeah. That's good, man. What about you? I want to hear what you think from your perspective. You're the <laughs> audio guy. So I'm just thinking about the first audio situation. I'm just like, yeah, I could never imagine that right now. I'd lose my mind. <laughs> I'd, I completely agree with all of you. I think it's God. He was giving you the real life schooling at that point. And it was like one of those things where you were at a, you were still enjoying what you were doing with art, but at the same time, I know you weren't really happy with how mm. things were going. It was more so just a job at that point. Yeah. Cause like you, you started that to become an artist, but then you were just becoming someone that people were hiring. Right. Right. It wasn't like you were actually being the artist that you wanted to be. And you were trying to find an outlet to like actually show what you had to offer. And so you went about it in a way like going into something you had no idea how to do it. And that can be like very scary, you know, and there's yeah. like multiple times I, I remember you tell me like, yeah, like he said, I have no idea if this is going to work out. Like, yeah. it's just I'm just trying it. And like, I remember you being worried like, oh, man. I'm like either putting money into this or time into this, or I'm like losing sleep over whatever it may be. And like, what if it's not worth it? And, but the thing is, is like, you always got to ask yourself, what if it is worth it? You mm -hmm. know? So it's one of those things where like, I think that you just like kept going and, um, through God's plan, he was like, okay, it's here's, here's, here's how it's supposed to be. If you like, if you keep, if you keep believing and knowing that, like, if you keep putting that trust in me and you keep doing this, you'll, get to the point that you are right now. Yeah. You just didn't know it at the time, but and yeah. no one does. But that's yeah. why you're at where you're at. I appreciate you saying that, man. Um, you know, I want to throw the question back to you guys. Like, how does faith play a role in, you know, what you do? Because as a, you know, creative agency, there's there's a ton of ups and downs. So like Absolutely. how do you power through those? How do you lean on your faith when things <clears throat> don't go as planned? Um, and what role does that play? I think that um, I mean it's huge because in the creative field, it's very, it's very just up in the air sometimes. You know, a lot of people don't put emphasis on creativity because it's like the last thing, especially like in budgets and things like that. It's like, okay, well, that's kind of like the last thing on the list or people are like, well, I could do that myself. So like the rate you're charging doesn't seem right or, you know, something of that nature. And then someone like, you create this whole proposal for someone and then it just kind of like, ah, we're gonna pull out because we just, we don't have the, are not able to afford it, we're just not in a position to do this right now. So it's tough, but I always, I mean, we, we have a great community around us, really, really strong people that can help us out and just keep our heads up. I think that's really important. I think having like a community is just, I mean, you can't do it by yourself. Um, and just to like bounce off of other people, it's it's really special. I think that's what's helped me out a lot. I know it's helped out Cole a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know, I think that's, answer right there yeah. yeah 
and I'm not going to have much of a different answer. It's just like, so you got to put that trust in what you're doing. Cause there's like a lot of times where people look at things and they just, you know, it may not be working out for them, especially like in the creative world, you know, cause it's like, it may not be working out for them at the time and you feel like you're drowning, but it's like one of those things where if you like, if you keep going, it's like, you can either choose like the easy route and just be like, you know what? I know this isn't working out. I'm like, kind of like this, I need to like find a way to make it safe. Right. right. And I'm not saying it, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out for you. That's just how it goes. Not everything's going to be perfect. But if you truly put the effort in, you want to make it happen. And like I said, you put that trust in. It's one of those things where it's like when you're 75 years old, 80 years old, right? And you're looking back, you can either be like, oh, man, I wish I did that. I wish I didn't like choose to do, you know, this job. I wish I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. Or you could be like, that was like my life has been fulfilled. I actually yeah. that's a well lived life. And I'm really happy that I actually pushed forward and put that effort into what I wanted and what I needed. So Man, said he didn't have anything to add to it and then just dropped some bars on us. Dropped like it. That. What, one of the other things I want to touch on real quick is it's like our initial connection is our man, Jordy. Okay. okay. So Legend. tell me about Jordan. Tell me about the first time you met Jordan. So Jordan is Jordan Armstrong. He came in here actually recently. I was giving cool him a little dude. tour yeah. around and, um, but yeah, tell me like who Jordan is to you guys. So it's a mutual friend who's yeah. actually connected us and, um, you know, play, you know, has worked and helped build up hounds to, um, Absolutely. you know, to what it is today. So tell me a little bit about Jordan and what he means to you guys. So Jordan is a member of the hounds. Um, there is seven original members. Um, he's one of the members, but, uh, from when we first started this out, he'd seen what we were doing. This was back in, I think, 28, 2018, 2018 was the first time we had met. Um, and he reached out to us. He wanted to meet with us. And I was like, at the time, I'd seen his work. And I knew he was very talented. And I was like, man, this is awesome. He's reaching out to us and, you know, wants to work with us at some point. That's really cool. And we met. We kicked, like, when we first met, it was like, love at first sight. <laughs> we just, like, How do you yeah. not love Jordan? He's such a good guy. He's literally like this little cartoon character. <laughs> like, he's so, like, he's so kind and thoughtful, but very smart and creative and just like, I don't know, he just he really is a jack of all trades. He can get anything done. He's mm -hmm. he's a great leader, you know. And so, from there, you know, was, we explained to him what we were doing with hounds and how we wanted to be like this, almost like partnership, this like group of collective or this collective of creatives where we could all work together and create these projects and you know potentially get client work together and whatever that is. Which and that's what we built it to. Um, and yeah, I mean Jordan has been our guy our go-to guy for i mean he's told he's told stories with us you know he's he's an incredible incredible cinematographer I mean, he can capture anything like none other it's it's amazing to see uh especially him just seeing the production behind the scenes of him doing it um you know we can create a storyboard and we can put all these ideas together um but then sometimes he catches things that like I was like, man, I, I wasn't even thinking of that. Like, that's incredible. And it might be just like the most simple shot, but it just really brought the whole story together. And he was like, oh, just like throwing <laughs> things together. And I thought that might be cool. And I was like, Dude, it's incredible. He's, he's a great, he's just so creative. Yeah. Amazing director, mm -hmm. everything about it. So, yeah. 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 Jordan is monumental in our lives, whether that's through hounds or personally. So it's like one of those things where it's like you have someone who's an amazing person, amazing friend to you that you can go to no matter what. Mm -hmm. But then you have someone who you can go to no matter what when it comes to like your own work, whether that's like I need help with this or, hey, can you be a part of this project? And he he's one of those people that like he will find time. Mm -hmm. He's not going to especially like, you know, it's I think just in general, he'll find time no matter what. But like, you know, the relationship we've created, he's like, you know, the people that he cares about, he will always make sure that they're taken care of. And he's like, hey, if you need like. You say it, I'll do it. I got you, no matter what. So. And I mean, he's the one that brought us to Bridge City, so that's how we like connected True. with you as well. So that was yeah. like a huge thing. Yeah, awesome. I mean, dude, Jordan, Jordan's actually like very instrumental in my own faith. Yeah. Um, because I I didn't grow up going to church. I didn't have any sort of religious background. I just you know believed in God. That was as far as really my whole faith went. Yeah. Um, and then I remember starting to go to church after college. Uh, only because my wife 
who was my girlfriend at the time wanted me to go. And I was like, eh, I don't know if this whole thing's for me. And I remember the first time going there, I met Jordan yeah. and I was like, you know, immediately hit him off. He had long hair at the time. <laughs> crazy. And I remember I, I hit it off with him and I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I don't really know right now. And I was like, Oh, me too. Like we both don't really know what we do right now. Let's get together and not know what we do together. And we would just meet up. And that's, that was actually why I always chose certain places for us to meet. Cause I'm like really big on like full circle and like locations yeah. and signs and like, I don't know, call it superstitious or what, but like, you know, I think that there is an energy or like a faith that, you know, I don't know, that's associated with certain things or places or spaces. And so, uh, you know, one of the first places that I wanted to meet with you guys was the coffee shop that I mentioned earlier, because me and Jordan would go sit there for hours th this year that I first kind of, yeah. um, you know, found my faith. And we would talk about everything dude, yeah. from scripture to, you know, our relationships to life to, you know, our childhood growing up and then you know then that we, we would start leaning into like what we were doing creatively and dude if, that's, if you guys thought i was all over the place when you met me you should have met me a few years before that before Sheesh. i moved to charlotte because it was even more of like a when i met jordan i was selling cars at a car dealership like oh wow so it's it, it, it's, it's, it's it's a lot man and, and he helped me a lot through that time in my life because that was when my dad got sick and I quit the car dealership and just yeah. went into art full time, which just meant I was unemployed. And Jordan got me through a lot of that where I wasn't making any money. I was living at home with my parents and he would just like lean into, you know, just me. He was just a good friend. Like he just Absolutely. never he never told yeah. me like what I needed to do or like he never gave me a piece of advice that I look back on. And I'm like, man, that changed my life. He just was there every yeah. time I needed him to be there. Good friend, and man. Like, Shout out to Jordan, man. Yeah, he's Shout a great dude, man. And like, so the fact that like when he introduced me to you guys, I was moving back from Charlotte. You guys yeah, had created this whole relationship those five years I was gone. Mm -hmm. And I had heard or seen a lot about you through social media. Yeah. But when I came back to Pittsburgh, I was like, dude, Jordan, you got to connect me with these two dudes. They're like crazy talented. You guys are doing amazing things together. And so, you know, fast forward it all, man, like God's been behind the scenes of all of this. And I feel like now I have such a confidence in my spirit that like when I just lean into what God, you know, is calling me to do, man, like he puts people like you in my life. He puts people like you or Jesse or whoever it may be. They just show up. Mm -hmm. I can't explain it. They just show up every time. And that's all due to faith. Like it's all just leaning into it. And Absolutely. So I, I, I don't know. I, I appreciate you guys talking about that because I know it plays a, a big part in, you know, your lives. And I Absolutely. know that your, you know, connection to Jordan plays a big role in that. Yep. And so I can get Jordan on this show at some point, yeah, too. We to will. On here. I got a question for everybody, though. So exhibit two? Question mark? <sighs> Shit. I didn't. I mean, hey. I wasn't ready. You, hey, you let <laughs> us know. <laughs> exhibit hey, two. Let us know what, what you not, I'm just going to leave it up there in the air somewhere until somebody <laughs> grab it eventually. You let us know. Uh, we're excited. It's going to, I mean, that was, like I said, it was awesome to see. I mean, oh man, it was just, it was fun to see you, Vinny, just like doing your thing. Everyone was there, like loving on you. I feel like I blacked out, dude. I had one beer. <laughs> and I just blacked out. And not beer. even from. And, be and, and beer. beer one. Yeah. <laughs> one and beer. Yeah. It was beer. just like such a crazy experience to see that come together. And like the uh, love in that room from, from everybody I talked to yeah. was out of this world, man. I like, mean, dude, it was at stage AE. Like that's like massive. That's a, a first, first event. First ever. Like, like you're just like, all right. Like, goosebumps. We'll, we'll just do it at stage AE. That sounds cool. <laughs> to have the whole place for yourself to just like dedicate it and show you yeah. off your art and have other people involved as well because i mean you know zach and chase were amazing with they Edwards, crushed that amazing with that they they totally crushed that installation super proud of them and i mean with zach the ball boy i mean he is so creative with ar so yeah. it's just like i don't know it's just cool to see it all come together and mm -hmm. everyone kind of have their kind of their hand into that it was awesome yeah and it, you know, to raise money too for a good cause, Dude, like you know, we we raised like you did your it, thing, like ten thousand dollars. Yeah, or it was ten. Like that. It was ten. Was it ten? Mm -hmm. For like a nonprofit, and like now, you know, Brian's on the board of that nonprofit. So yeah. it's like to see, like I've met the kids that that. It's not like we just wrote it off to some charity. Charity, yeah. like I've met the kids that are affected by this, and like you know, it's it's really fun to see that come to life. And I think you know, God blesses things like that too, where you yeah. know, like I didn't. You forgot something. 
you forgot on everything that you did for the creatives that pulled up. Like there's a lot of creatives who weren't even a part of the show that were like, oh, like there's somebody out here that's actually taking care of us out here. Mm-hmm. Like you met Swing there. You met a lot of people at that show, bro. That's the reason why I even bring it up to all of y'all, bros, because I know you guys are all creatives, right? But think about the city that's almost dying. Like, And I say that because we started with 1.2 million about 2017, 2018. Mm-hmm. In 2023, we're at 300,000 people in our city. Is that real? It's around that area. Jeez, the reason why it's, it's crazy. Are you sure? I know it's Jesse, around that fact area. Check that. Come on, Jesse. Jesse. That Bring it up, seems baby. a little extreme. Well, we got no, it. it was pretty. It if was that's pretty. That's true. That's crazy. It's, if it's not one point two, I know it's like nine hundred thousand or a million. Really? I know that for a fact, and it's do, it's dwindled badly due to the fact that a lot of businesses are leaving, a wow. lot of people are leaving. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you guys took time, right, to create something that makes people yeah. believe in something, I thought that was the coolest shit I've ever seen. And I only played a small role in it. Like I played a role in the sense of bringing Brian to you, mm. but in terms of the actual creativity behind it and everything that was going on, the people that I invited, they're like, bro, who are these people? I said, bro, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, just, I just met this man and then these yeah. two dudes, they showed up. I was like, twins. People thought something like real shady was up just because of like how crazy the connections were. They're like, I dude, know. there's no way that you just pulled off an event. In a month. A, a, a crazy event at Stage AE. In a just, month. Like, this guy just believes you at face value and is going to pay for this event. And I'm I like, know. yeah, I, I guess like, so. Dang. Like, I went to Gala. <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, I've been, hey, Brian is, I mean, he's he does he, he does that because he knows it's going to work out. I mean, he has that faith, and that's why he puts in, he invests in those things. Because obviously, yeah. look at you guys now. Look at this. This is crazy, you know? Yeah. And, and it actually worked out. So Yeah. It is crazy now that you guys say that. Like, I'm just reminiscing right now, personally, from the outsider standpoint, right? Because, like, for a while, I was looking in. Now we're apart, but like for a while, I was looking in and like, yo, y'all really, that is something that I personally hope that we do again as a collective because that was extremely fun. One, two, there was mad people who showed up and I feel like exhibit two for some reason would be even seven times bigger just because like, <sighs> oh man, the people who seen it the first time was like, yeah, I'm yeah. definitely going the next time. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's always what it is with events like for the first time. It's like, uh, it may not be that many people, but it's crazy because it was still like, Jumps like it was crazy to see how many people were in there and how big stage AE is. It's just for a first event like that, the second one is going to be. Bro, Matt, I mean, think about it like this, okay? Exhibit one happened, and I was fresh off of two episodes back in the basement because I was <laughs> reeling. I had like, I had no guests lined up. The podcast was dead in the water. <laughs> I met you guys, and I mean, I was ready to throw in the towel. And not because the podcast wasn't working or like I didn't believe in it, but it just, you hit those like phases yeah. of like, am I going to get over this hump? Right. Yeah. And I was at one of them. So if the exhibit was what it was with me having nine episodes or 10 episodes in the bag, imagine what it is now when Andrew McCutcheon's out here wearing the logo on his hat and we have partnerships with the Steelers and the Penguins Come and on. like, <laughs> it's going to be crazy. So like, we might as well do it again, bro. I think we should. I think like, I mean, if it took us a month to do the first one. <laughs> Dude, imagine if you did it like, yeah, you had like five months. Like how much yeah. like oh, more yeah. be, it would be yeah. massive. You gotta think, how many people do you guys think was there though? Like there's probably like what? I, I think, think we sold like 400 tickets. So we did 400 and we did a month. zero dollars worth of ads. Like yeah, I didn't, no I didn't pay for like any advertising. Media, yeah. I just organically shared it to my Instagram. Mm-hmm. And like you guys shared it out and you know, you created the logo for the exhibit and mm-hmm. like all that. So, you know, there there's... There's a lot to, to think about when it comes to this. So maybe we can. You said that like you ain't do it in a month. Like I get it. Yes, there's a lot. But I'm not saying we got to do it in a month, but I'm saying yeah. in five months, mm-hmm. if we did it in five months, right? Yeah. Just hypothetical right now. In five months, you had in a month, 400 people show up. Four times five is what? That's 2,000 people. Okay. That's nothing too crazy. Then you got to think about the amount of artists you had there. You had two strong, well, three or four strong artists that are your friends that you really helped out in a big way. Mm-hmm. But in four to five months, you could add whoever you want to add. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the amount of talent that you were able to present to people in a month. I don't think people genuinely understand on how much work went into this thing. Like it's crazy. the hounds went crazy. It you went lot. crazy. The the I ain't gonna lie, I did my fundraising job. Though. I ain't, I was you out did, there. You, you did, did your thing. Hey, you hey, came hey, through at the end. Hey, I, was, I like, jumped in that mug. Shout <laughs> out, shout out to you, you because was, we were sweating a little bit. I mean, like I said, like Brian, he fronted you know, 75% of it, but the rest of it was up to us to crowd, you know, fund and Mm -hmm. figure out how to pay for it. And, and a lot of it was me, you know, 
making promises <laughs> before I had the money to pay for those promises. But dude, we delivered. I paid everybody every dime that I promised them I'd pay. We made the event happen. It was an overwhelming success. Yep. I had formed so many relationships in that and it launched. I mean, that's why when we, we did the next episode, which was the follow up to the podcast, I called the episode momentum, mm -hmm. which is funny because I felt like before that I had none. <laughs> and that's why I called it momentum because mm. it was just so anyways, man, I feel like I appreciate you guys coming on sure. and yeah, like absolutely. talking about just, you know, this in, in, a, in a nutshell. And I, I didn't want this to just be like a, hey, come compliment me on my own podcast. I, you know, I'd love to have you back on and talk a little bit more about what you do. But with it being episode 50, yeah. I thought that it was there was nobody better to have sit in the guest chair to talk about how we got to this point than you guys. So maybe, you know, every 50 we'll have you guys on or something like that. I love that, that idea. I love that. Episode 100 already. Episode 100 here. Crazy. Maybe. Um, but yeah, I guess before we head out, you know, maybe if there's anything you guys want to give our viewers, our listeners, uh, heads up on what you guys have cooking right now or Instagram, ways to look for them or social know, things media. Like that. Yeah. So, um, right now, uh, one of the big things we want to like push out there is the, uh, jungle basketball court that we're renovating yes. the North side. So that's going to be huge. You're, wait a minute, wait a minute. Cause that's what I grew up on. Y'all don't know this about me, but the jungle is where I learned how to play basketball. Bro, Did you know what they've done? Did you see the, uh, Oh, oh my hold on. Oh, wow. my gosh. All right. Baby. Because I ain't going to lie. Hey, You're listen, talking about the jungle. That's, that's near podcast, and, and I'm here for it. So, like, oh, man. I mean, listen, whatever. I know you guys got a lot to do, but if you have some time to we'll like, talk about we'll it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's talk about it because I need to hear it because that's no, how I grew you're, up. You're I grew up to, playing in that mug. Like, what's man, up? You're about to lose your mind right now. <laughs> so, um, 20 at the end. So, in 2019, we did an event. It was called Basketball. And we wanted to, we love basketball, grew up playing it, favorite sport. Huge Knicks fans. Our family's from New York. Okay. So it was like from Brooklyn. Um, but we never had a basketball team in Pittsburgh. And we were like, we're not going to root for the Cavs or the Sixers. You know, we would always watch the Knicks. So it was just like that was our thing. And, you know, with Hounds, it's very gritty, industrial, blue collar. And we were trying to figure out how we could mix this together with basketball. So we we're like, basketball. So it was an event around, it centered around like basketball fights. And there was an installation in the center, vendors set up all around it. It was a really great idea. And our goal there from there was we met with uh, Swish Dreams, which is a nonprofit okay. uh, court saver. Uh, they, they do things all over, all over the country, just uh, working with Project Backboard and things of that nature. And we talked to Hannah, uh, and she was like, we should do a court in Pittsburgh. And I was like, I'd absolutely love to. You know, it'd be amazing. Uh, from there... Um, we found out about Janelle Young. We knew Janelle Young, uh, but we didn't know that she had done a court um, in Beltuber, where she's from, and at Upper McKinley Park. Mm -hmm. And so she did the first artistic basketball court in Pittsburgh. Uh, and it was awesome. We're like, mm -hmm. All right, well, she's got to be involved because she did the first one. She knows how to do this. It'll be awesome all this together. She can be the artist. Um, and, and she's so creative in the first place. We just need to have that with us. Um, so 2020 came around. We're like ready to go. We have this whole plan. We've been, we've met with the city a bunch. We're trying to like explain the whole situation to them. We're like, oh, we want to do we want to do at the court at Arch Street, known as the Jungle. Um, you know, we, we want to see what we can do here for uh, the North Side community, and because we grew up playing there, and so we're not from the North Side. But all you, our friends live there. Ay, our, our, ay. Gra our grandfather <laughs> lived in the North Side, so it was just like this thing where like you got my respect. You made it out the jungle. All right, <laughs> yeah, so, all right. And the thing is, is that the jungle is like such a historic court for Pittsburgh. It's like you know the Rucker Park or the Dykeman of Pittsburgh. You know, um, so we wanted to bring that back and just the energy around it. And basketball is not a huge thing in Pittsburgh. I mean, we have the Pitt Panthers, and it's an awesome team and but it's not it's not like football that's here a hockey town or even baseball like if it's you know at one point um so you know COVID hit everything kind of went crazy there was no funding for anything you know i mean 2020 was just like an absolute blur I and mean, it was no one was looking to do anything obviously um and then over the years we're like we got to keep this going we got to figure this out figure this out and then 2023 hits Janelle hits us up. She's like, hey, there's this competition, this campaign that Project Backboard, Local Hoops, Five Star Basketball, um, Langston Galloway Foundation are doing. Um, and it was awesome to see Langston Galloway because he played for the Knicks at one point. And I was like, oh, man, that's sweet. Like, love to see this. <laughs> um, we should 
the goal was to create a story. It was called Every Chord Has a Story. Okay. So it was to either produce a short film or take photos and kind of explain, you know, the story and why this court needs renovation. So we're like, all right, well, that's what we do. Like, that's like our legit job. Like, we love doing Red this. Bread and butter storytelling. Yeah. yeah. And we had this idea with the court originally that we would mix basketball and jazz in some way because they're very similar. I mean, they're both sporadic. You know, you have this ensemble that's working together. And there's a common goal, but, I mean, things can just get chaotic at certain points. Um, and it was a huge thing that, like, you know, Kareem, Abdul- Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would listen to jazz before he practiced. Like, like he would listen to it all the time. And that was, like, his saying, I listen to jazz. It makes me a better basketball player. Because I wish other basketball players would listen to jazz more often. And we're like, all right, this is, like, too good. Like, this has to connect. Like we said, basketball in Pittsburgh is not a huge thing, but it's in- there's importance to it. Same with jazz in Pittsburgh. There's importance to jazz with the history of with the history of it. I mean, you had Chicago and New York, and when everyone would travel between, they would stop in Pittsburgh, and that's why the Hill District became such a hub. I mean, even the Hill District, North Side, East Liberty, those are like the three main hubs. That makes me smile right now. <laughs> people don't know that unless you really like you dig into the history of Pittsburgh. They don't know about the jazz history, it's especially incredible. in the Hill District. They well, used to be the biggest area. I mean, yeah. not only just yet yeah, the. I mean. Crawford Grill obviously was the place to go, but the artists that were even born out of Pittsburgh, like Ahmad Jamal, Stanley Turrentine, uh, Roy Elridge, and it's like these artists came from Pittsburgh and they're jazz legends. And it's like Pittsburgh doesn't get, you know, the shine on the, their j- jazz history. And we're like, we need to push this in the modern era. Yeah. Right? Mm. So with all that being said, we put this idea together. We created this story. You know, and the original idea was a lot more um, and we just didn't have the time for it. Um, but, you know, simply put, we had this idea of doing a North Side solo. That's what it was called, a North Side solo, because it was going to be a basketball player practicing on the court solo. And the music that we used for the, the actual like score, like the theme of the, the film uh, was uh, Roy Elridge and He's from the North Side. So we were like, we need to make sure that it's not just like any random jazz track or whatever it might be. I mean, obviously, it's if it was a Pittsburgh jazz artist, that's cool. But like to make it a North Side Pittsburgh jazz artist who is an absolute legend. I mean, him and Dizzy Galipsy have a whole album together. It's actually the song we used was from that album with Dizzy Galipsy mm. and Roy Elridge. And just that coming together and sending that in, we're just like, all right. We'll see what we can do. We know, we know our skills. We know our talents. We know what we can create. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, up to the people to decide. So they had this competition. Every court has a story. Tons of people sent in submissions. Originally, we thought it was going to be based off like a panelist that was mm-hmm. going to vote for the video. We didn't know it was going to be a public vote. Uh, so when we found out it was going to be a public vote, we're like, all right, this is going to be nuts. Because, like, there was Brooklyn involved. Harlem was involved. Kentucky and then Pittsburgh. Those are the four finalists. Um, and man, it went absolutely insane. And even the people who had did the, started the campaign for the contest, they didn't even realize how big it was going to get. I mean, we had at the end, we had over like 16,000 votes. Wow. And it's like, crazy. how can you, and we were neck to neck with Brooklyn. And so we won a court and then Brooklyn also won a hold court. On, on. And so... <laughs> And by the way, the court in Brooklyn is soul in the hole. I don't know if you know what that is. It's what it's like another famous court like Rucker Park. But so, didn't so. you just say your family's from Brooklyn? <laughs> I know. That is well, wild, <laughs> bro. I know. It's crazy. All right, keep going, man. Keep going. You got my head scratching. So like okay. all of this is kind of like full circle, you know, and it's funny to see we're like going back and forth. Obviously, like Pittsburgh's our home. Like that's like where Cole and I are from. That's like mm. where our roots are. But we spent a lot of time in Brooklyn and a lot of time in New York. So it's like wild to be able to do this and kind of, I don't know, just like go against like our second home in mm. a way. Um, and uh, just, I don't know, it's just beautiful to see. And we won the court. It's going to be full renovation from resurfacing, new hoops, breakaway rims, you know, plexiglass backboards. I mean, the whole nine yards. It's going to be. The court itself, the muralist Janelle Young, she will. She has created that's, a design and will be painting the court. Oh, yeah. So, that's oh, awesome, It's going to be. She, she's going to crush it. You know what you guys got to do next? Got to have a big-ass tournament. We already have hey. that in the plans. Hey, hey I'm there, go. bro. Hey, listen. Uh, the Jungle the Classic. Team AA? 
The, yay, the jungle classic sounds crazy. We need an athletic aesthetic team. Facts. And but here's That'd the thing, crazy. we're not playing in it. We're gonna recruit some. <laughs> you gotta get some, some talent. Then he's like, I thought we hey, would play. Time out. What are you talking about? I'm gonna play. Bro? I'm starting point guard. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, that yeah. is that is amazing, guys. So that the goal is amazing. to start in the spring of the production and then finish in the summer. Um, we will have a ribbon ceremony. Um, at some point in late July or early August. So that'll be with like a block party, ribbon ceremony, hopefully a tournament, you know, skills clinic as well, starting out with kids. Um, but we're going to try as much as we can to connect with the community and uh, make this just, you know, a really special event for Pittsburgh. I yeah. love the North Side. We will be there, man. For sure. I can't wait. A hundred percent, man. This sounds so exciting. I'm um, geeked right now. Yeah. So like if people are interested in following along with that journey of like, you know, hearing more about it, where should they go? Or So they can go to, we actually have a uh, Instagram account for it. It's okay. uh, at the jungle PGH. Uh, that will have all the links there. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know the exact links. Um, but guy's looking it up right now. At jungle, <laughs> the, at the jungle PGH on Instagram is where you'll find, or you can follow us um, at Hounds USA. Uh, we'll be put, posting things on our story or on our no actual feed. Yeah, uh, trying to keep everyone updated as much as we can. Same with Janelle at JY dot Originals and then Swish Dreams. Okay, uh, it's, it's Swish with two H's and then Dreams. Okay, so um, yeah, we're all going to be posting updates and making sure that everyone can see what's going on, and it's it's going to be pretty exciting. I'm gonna eat right now. I know. Uh, I can't wait. That's crazy, man. Well, congratulations. Like you know, I know that's there's a lot of work that that goes into that kind Thanks. of stuff. Like yeah. people have no idea the the half of it. So. Congrats, man. You guys have been chasing your dream. It's not it's not easy to come from Pittsburgh and yep. do something outside the box, but you guys have inspired me. Uh, I wouldn't be sitting here if you didn't inspire me. That's just a fact. Um, and I hope that, you know, what you guys are doing creates a path for, you know, some kid to, you know, come to that court and find a, a new home or a new love or, a, you know, new calling that he didn't or she didn't know that Absolutely. they had. And so, you know, I just want to let you guys know, man, anything you ever need, we're here. Um, appreciate you we coming in. If there's, um, you know, anything we could do to help promote this, let us know as well. Thank you. But, um, man, this has been great. We definitely yeah. got to get you back maybe before episode 100. So we will. We'll see. Yeah, maybe come we'll come in with Jordan. You should come in and we should yeah. promote the event before you guys. I would love that. All right. We'll definitely idea. get you guys involved because it'll cool. be, I mean, we want everyone to be involved. We so. did. We started a segment, um, too. Uh, it's called Out and About. And out and so About. We right. should maybe come do an Out and About at the uh, at the jungle. You should, especially like before it gets renovated. That'd be right. cool for you guys to right. like show cool. people what, where Sneaks. it's at right now. All right, cool. Let's do it, man. Appreciate you guys coming in. Um, and, man, we, we always sign off. Uh, yeah. Maybe we should just throw it to them. Yeah. So, like, we'll say athletic aesthetic and then you say, and we love you. But they have a, yeah. they don't have a soul. You got to get in each other's cam. Yeah. Pick Wait, a cam. So, so I'm going to say this was athletic aesthetic. And then you look at the camera and say, and we love you. And we, we love you. you. Ready? Get tight, you gotta get, get we got to get, get, get one of the tight. shots. Tight. You got to hey, get in on. one of the shots. Yeah, you got to let us quick. know if we're in it. This is all. A little bit more. There we go. We ready? Hold on. Oh, us too. Ah, I see here. That's here we right. Go. Bring it in here, buddy. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all the things. Check us out on Instagram. I uh, appreciate you being here. This is Athletic Aesthetic. And we love you. We love you.